example number one find the value of n okay we have two equivalent fraction one twelfth equals n over 36 ha. look at the two denominators are the like denominators no they are different they are alike denominator we have to unify the two denominators now 12 i want to change 12 to be 36 so from smaller to greater i will multiply yes 12 times what equals 36 yes times 3 multiply up and down by 3 it will be 12 times 3 1 times 3 okay the new fraction will be 1 times 3 equals what equals 3 and 12 times 3 equals 36 so our new fraction is 3 over 36 now n equals what equals 3 so n equals 3 number 2 we have in this side n over 5 equals 10 over 25 ha, look at this side we want to change 25 to be 5 so we will multiply or divide yes from greater to smaller so we will divide this side by what ha, 25 over what equals 5 yeah, or in another way what is the number by 5 gives us 25 yes 5 by 5 so here over 5 divide up and down over 5 okay 10 over 5 equals 2 25 over 5 equals 5 so n equals what equals 2 n equals 2 another example find the gcf of 18 and 27 gcf means yes greatest common factors so we have to get factors of 18 and factors of 27 let's get at first factors of 18 factors of 18 okay what times what equals 18 at first 1 times 18 equals 18 what else yes 2 times 9 equals 18 ha, what else yes 3 times 6 equals 18 so factors of 18 are what 1 18 2 9 3 6 let's write them factors are what 1 18 2 9 3 6 ha. let's get now those factors of 27 okay what times what equals 27 yes 1 times 27 equals 27 what else yes 3 times 9 equals 27 so factors of 27 are 1 27 3 9 let's determine now the greatest common factor of 18 and 27 now the first repeated number is what is 1 so the first repeated number is 1 so circle 1 and 1 what else 3 and 3 circle 3 and 3 what is common also yes 9 and 9 9 and 9 so let's write now the common factors common factors common factors are what we circled what yes 1 3 9 so 1 3 9 now i want to determine the greatest common factor g c f it will what is the greatest one in these factors one, yes one or three or nine we have three common factors the greatest one is what is nine so gcf of 18 and 27 is nine find lcm of four and eight okay we know that lcm means what least common multiple so we have to get multiples of 4 and multiples of 8 okay yes multiples of 4 start with 0 okay 0 ha. at 4 it will be 4 at 4 it will be 8 then 12 then 16 ha. and so on ha. factors of 8 yes 8 0 at 8 it will be 8 at 8 each time it will be uh, 8 plus 8 equals 16 uh, then yes 24 and so on now 
we ha we have to what circle the least common multiple what is what is the least common multiple here yes is 8 so the least common multiple of 4 and the 8 is 8 so lcm is 8 now another example find the sum or the difference in simplest form okay number one seven ninths plus one ninth at first look at the two denominators are the the same denominator or unlike denominators yes nine and nine they are the same so put the same denominator nine and directly add 7 plus 1. 7 plus 1 equals 8. 7 plus 1 equals 8. So, it will be 8 ninths. Is it in simplest form? Yes, it is in simplest form. Why? Because if you get the G GCF of 8 and 9, it will be 1. This means that ninth is a fraction in simplest form. Number 2. We have 3 fifths plus 4 tenths. Ah, look at the two denominators now. Are they equal? No, they are different, unlike denominators. So, we should unify at first. 5 to change 5 to be 10. Yes, we multiply up and down by, yes, 2. So, multiply by 2 up and down. 3 times 2 equals 6. So, numerator now is 6. 5 times 2 equals 10. So, our fraction, our new fraction is 6 over 10. Add now, 6 plus 4 equals 10. In denominator is 10, so put 10. Ha. 10 over 10 equals what? Yes, equals 1. Okay. Number 3. 3 fourth minus 5 twelfths are unlike denominators. So we have to unify at first. Ha. 4, to change 4 to be 12, we multiply by? Yes, by 3. So multiply up and down by 3. 3 times 3 equals 9. So, the numerator now is 9. 4 times 3 equals 12. Then now we have the same denominator. So, put 12 now. And subtract. Pay attention, we subtract. Okay? 9 minus 5 equals 4. So, our fraction is what? 4 twelfths. Is it in simplest form? No, it is not in simplest form. Why? Because if you get... The GCF of 4 and 12, it will be 4. So, we will divide up and down by GCF. The GCF of 4 and 12 is 4. So, divide up and down over 4. Okay, it will be 4 over 4 equals 1. And 12 over 4 equals 3. So, our fraction now in simplest form is 1 third. Number 4. We have two mixed numbers. 10 and 7 eighths minus 2 and 5 eighths. Okay? At first, subtract the two whole numbers. 10 minus 2 equals, yes, 10 minus 2 equals 8. And put the fraction sign. Okay? Do we have the same denominators? Yes, they are like, so put it down. Then subtract 7 minus 5 equals 2. Ha. Look at the fraction now. 2 eighths. Is it in simplest form? No, it is not in simplest form. Why? Because the GCF of 2 and 8 is 2. So we have to divide up and down over the GCF. 2 over 2 equals? Yes, equals 1. And 8 over 2 equals 4. So our new mixed number now is what? 8 and 1 fourth in simplest form. Another example. Write the order of each from greatest to least. Number one, one tenth, seven tenth, and eight tenth. Ha, look at the three denominators. Ha, are they equal? Yes, they are like denominators. So look at what? At the greatest numerator. What is the greatest numerator now? One, seven, or eight? Yes, eight. So the greatest fraction now is eight tenth. Then what? 7 is greater than 1, or 1 is greater than 7? No, 7 is greater than 1. Then we write 7 tenths. What else? Yes, 1 tenth. So, we arranged them from the greatest to least. Okay? 
Number two, we look at what? The three denominators. Yes, are they like denominators or they are unlike? No, they are unlike denominators. Now we have three. So we have to unify this denominator. Okay, three to be nine. We multiply up and down by what? Yes, we multiply up and down by three. It will be three. Uh, multiply three up and down. Two times three equals six. And three times three equals nine. So our new fraction is six ninth. Let's arrange them from greatest to least now. Yes. What is the greatest one? Yes. Six over nine. Then what? Yes. Five over nine. Then what? Two over nine. Okay. So the greatest one is six ninth. Then five ninth. And the last one is two ninth. But Ha, we should put this in the original form, okay? Repeat it to be in the original form. So we have, this is what? This is two thirds. Then five ninths, then two ninths. Now guys, let's revise long division. If I want to divide 8,538 over 28, okay? I do it with long division, okay? Let's do it. Yes, our dividend now is what? Yes, 8,538 over 28. Over 28. Okay. Can we divide 8 over 28? No, we can't. 85 over 28? Yes, we can. Go to your draft. Ah. Now, get the timetable of the divisor. Yes, 28. 1 times 28 equals, yes, 28. 2 times 28. 2 times 28. 2 times 8 equals, yes, 16. Put 6 and carry up 1. 2 times 2 equals 4, plus 1 equals 5. Now we have 56. It's still smaller than, yes, 85. So continue. 3 times 28 equals, 3 times 8 equals 24. Put 4 and carry up 2. 3 times 2 equals 6. Plus 2 equals 8. So we have 84. It's still smaller than 85. Ha, try 4. 4 times 28 equals. 4 times 8 equals 32. Put, put 2 and carry up 3. 4 times 2 equals 8. Plus 3 equals 11. Now we have what? 100. And 12, yes, is greater than 85. So stop here and take this step, the previous step. So our quotient now equals 3. So put 3 up, then multiply the product equals 84. Then our product equals 84. Then subtract. Okay, 5 minus 4 equals 1. 8 minus 8 equals 0. Bring down what? The third digit now. Now we have 13. Can we divide 13 over 28? No, we can't. So do what? Yes, put zero in the quotient and bring the digit. Bring it down the fourth digit. Uh, it will be 138. Can we divide 138 over 28? Yes, of course we can divide. So go to your draft now, then continue. Five times 28 equals 5 times 8 equals 40. Put 0 and carry up 4. 5 times 2 equals 10. Plus 4 equals, yes, equals 40. Oh, it's greater than 138. So stop here and take the previous step. Take this previous step. So what is our quotient now? Yes, our quotient is 4. So put 4 up. Then multiply. The product is what? Yes, 112. So put 112 then subtract. It will be 8 minus 2 equals 6. 3 minus 1 equals 2. So our quotient equals 304. And remainder equals 26. Write each as a decimal or a fraction in simplest form. Okay? Now, number 1. We have 4 tenths. 4 tenths is what? Is a decimal, so we want to write it as a fraction. Uh, 4 tenths equals 4 over 10. 
Is it a fraction now? But is it in simplest form? No, it is not in simplest form. Why? Because the greatest common factor GCF of 4 and 10 is what is 2. So we, so we should divide up and down over 2. 4 over 2 equals 2. And 10 over 2 equals 5. So our fraction now uh, in the simplest form equals 2 fifths. Number 2. It's a fraction. And I want to, to write it as what? As a decimal. So it will be. Put 0 then the decimal. It will be 0 0.37. 37 hundredths. Put 0 then decimal and write 37. And we read it what? 37 hundredths. Number 3. 60 hundredths. Yes, it's a decimal. So we want to write it as what? Yes, as a fraction. It will be 60 over 10. No. 60 hundredths, so over 100. Now, is it in simplest form that we can cancel 0 up with 0 down? Now, what is the remainder? 6, 6 tenths, okay? But 6 and 10, uh, what is the GCF of 6 and 10? Yes, 2. So we'll divide up and, uh, and down by the GCF of 6 and 10. It will be 2. 6 over 2 equals 3. 10 over 2 equals 5. So our fraction now in this form is what? 3 fifth. 7 tenths. It's a fraction. I want to write it as what? As a decimal. So it will be, put 0 then the decimal. Okay? 7 tenths. Yes, it will be 0 0.7 as a decimal. No. Types of angles. The angle form is by two rays with the same end point, like this figure. In this figure, we have what? We have two rays, uh, the ray OB and the ray OA. They are two rays with the same end point. The end point is what? Is O. So, the two rays form is what? Form is an angle. This angle uh, has two sides. The two rays are called the sides of the angle, and O is called the vertex of the angle. So the angle is called angle O, or we can name it with three letters, the angle B O A or the angle A O B. Pay attention. We can't name the angle okay B A O or A B O. Why? Because we should put the letter of the vertex in the middle of the name. Okay? So the name of this angle, angle O with one letter, or angle A, O, B, or angle B, O, A. Acute angle. Acute angle is the angle with measure less than 90 degrees, like this figure. This angle is called acute angle. Its measure is less than 90 degrees. So any angle with measure less than 90 degrees is called what? Yes, it's called acute angle. If the angle was measured 72 degrees, it will be acute angle. If the angle was measured 89 degrees, it will be acute angle. So any angle with the measure less than 90, degree, 90 degrees, it will be acute angle. Right angle. If the angle was measured exactly equals 90 degrees, like the angle in this figure, this figure for a right angle. Okay, the angle AOB is right angle. It's exactly equals 90 degrees. Obtuse angle is the angle with measure greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. So any angle with measure between 90 and 180, it will be obtuse angle. So if the measure of the angle is 91, it will be, yes, obtuse angle if the measure of the angle is 100 it will be yes obtuse angle 150 degrees it will be yes obtuse angle what is the name of this angle yes we can name it angle a b c or angle c b a or with one letter angle b its type is what obtuse angle 
straight angle if the angle would measure exactly equals 180 degree, degrees the form of straight angle like this figure okay the angle a o b is what is a straight angle it's a measure exactly equals 180 degrees okay like a straight line relative positions of two straight lines intersecting the two straight lines are called intersecting straight lines if they across each other okay in one point like this figure we have two straight lines across each other okay at one point so they are called intersecting straight lines in the other figure also we have what yes we have two and our setting a straight line parallel parallel straight lines okay in this figure we have two parallel straight lines parallel means that they will never intersect they will never intersect also we have in this figure another two parallel straight lines perpendicular the two straight lines are called perpendicular if they are intersecting and they meet what four right angles four right angles if we found two two intersecting line segment or two intersecting straight lines uh, made four right angle they will be yes perpendicular also in this figure we have uh, a perpendicular straight lines types of triangles the triangles are classified according to their sides and their angles. Types of triangles according to their sides. The triangle with three equal sides is called equilateral triangle. And the triangle with just two equal sides is called isosceles triangle. A triangle with no equal sides, the three sides are different is called a scalene triangle types of triangle according to their angles if the three angles in the triangle are acute angles so the triangle is called acute triangle if we have a right angle in the triangle it will be right triangle like this figure If we have an obtuse an obtuse angle in the triangle, it will be obtuse triangle, like this figure. Polygons. Polygons are plane figures that made up of sides, and the sides are in the shape of line segments, like this figure. This figure is called polygon, made up of three sides. And the polygon with three sides is called triangle. Pay attention. At any polygon, the number of vertices equals the number of sides equals the number of angles. So the triangle is the polygon is the polygon with what? With three sides and three vertices and three angles. Quadrilateral is the polygon of four sides, four vertices, and four angles angles pentagon pentagon is a polygon with five sides five vertices and five angles hexagon hexagon is a polygon with six sides six vertices and six angles heptagon Heptagon is a polygon, yes, with seven sides, seven vertices, and seven angles. The octagon is a polygon with eight sides, eight vertices, and eight angles. Nanagon. Nanagon is a polygon with nine sides, nine vertices, and nine angles. The last polygon 
is decagon. Decagon is the polygon with 10 sides, 10 vertices, and 10 angles. Quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals are polygons with four sides. Uh, the first quadrilateral we are revising now is parallelogram. Parallelogram is a quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides, or each two opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. Uh, look at this side and this side. They are opposite. They are equal in length and parallel. Also, this side and this side. They are parallel and equal in length. So, parallelogram is a quadrilateral with, with two pairs of parallel and equal sides. Okay, each two opposite sides are parallel and equal in length. The second parallelogram or the second quadrilateral we are studying now is rectangle. Rectangle. This figure is called rectangle. Rectangle is a parallelogram. Why parallelogram? Because each two opposite sides are equal in length and parallel. And parallel. So it is also a parallelogram. But it has four right angles. It has four right angles. So what is the definition of a rectangle? A rectangle is a parallelogram with four with four right angles. The third quadrilateral is what is a square. A square is also a parallelogram, okay? But all sides are equal in length. And it has also four right angles. Rhombus. Rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal sides. What about the angles of the rhombus? Are they right? No, they are not right angles.